Hi and welcome again to the channel. Uh, this time I'm going to start a tutorial for Perl. Uh, I'll probably call it a tutorial for modern Perl, uh, even though the, this modern thing is, is slightly a buzzword, but uh, it also has a meaning here. Uh, we're trying to show stuff that at least uh, that needs modern version of Perl uh, that was released in the last couple of years. Uh, we will base it on on uh, Perl 510 uh, probably. And there should be a book here. Yeah, so there is this this book. If you a modern Perl, it's called. And uh, I won't follow the this book. Ob obviously, I'll follow my uh, training material that I have been using uh, with slight differences because the the format is different than a uh, frontal training. But I really recommend to to buy this book. Although you can actually download it free of charge as a PDF. Um, so if you don't, if you can't afford it. Uh, or you don't want to invest uh, money in it, then go ahead and, and download it. We'll show the link uh, uh, somewhere later on. Uh, anyway, uh, the the book is really good, and I rec recommend uh, everyone to to read it, even though it's not really a tutorial or not really a basic learning book. So let's uh, see what we are going to use. We are going to use uh, uh, the strawberry pearl distribution. Actually, the the derivative of the strawberry pearl distribution. The Padre on strawberry package. We're going to use that, though we could actually do use any version of, of Perl for this, but this just makes us uh, makes it easier. So the first thing you, we do is uh, go to the website of uh, of uh, padre.perlide.org. Here you can see it. Uh, click on the, the download link. Here, scroll down a little bit. There is the link to download the latest version of Padre on strawberry. This is this includes both the Perl compiler interpreter and uh, a development environment and editor basically which is called Padre and lots of uh, modules that you're going to need for uh, the development so I recommend to download this one uh, then once you download it double click on it and follow the instructions just install it and once you install it you will have um, in the start menu you can go to all programs strawberry pearl and click on the butterfly here the blue one uh, which is opening the the IDE once you have the open the IDE here you have a empty space uh, to type uh, some text uh, but what we are going to do is, uh, is go to the file menu option and new the second new here uh, and click on Perl 5 script this will, this will this will generate a basic Perl 5 script for you uh, I'll explain the, the parts later what you need to do is type in print hello world this is the new the standard thing uh, and then we have to save it because it's an unsaved file and without saving the editor can't run it so we save it uh, let's say we, we call it uh, hello world hw let's say save it and once I saved it I can run it uh, via run run script or pressing the F5 it will bring a, a window, a pop-up window, uh, and you will see "Hello World" printed. Press any key to continue. This is uh, something that Windows adds uh, in order to to let us see the actual output. Otherwise, it would, would close immediately this window, and we wouldn't see the output. So just press some key, and then uh, you're good. You can go on. So. That's the basic example to, to write a really simple uh, Perl script, but let's go over uh, these parts. So the first line is uh, it's called the shebang. It's mostly used for Unix systems, but it doesn't matter even if on, or you put it on, on the Windows machine. Uh, so it doesn't really matter. Use uh, 5.006. This means that uh, when you run the script, uh, it will check first whether your Perl is at least 5.6. Uh, the five the 5.6 version now because this is actually a very ancient version of Perl uh, the 5.6 version so we are going to use a newer one and we are going to require a newer one so I'll change this to 5.10 specifically this one uh, will also enable a couple of new features in the language uh, that we can use use strict and use warnings there are two uh, additional um, basically compiler flex that uh, make the, the, the Perl uh, interpreter work slightly differently in a more strict way and to provide you warnings 
in order to av avoid several issues. So I would recommend every time for every script just to start with these three entries. The shebang is not that important for us. Then once we have the... Uh, now you, what you can see here is that print is a keyword of Perl, then uh, any uh, string is going to be between uh, quotes, here we are put them in between double quotes, and the backslash n here means that when it's printed out, it will be printing a new line at the end. Uh, as you can see, uh, the statement ends with a semicolon here. Now because I used a, a require already 510, it already adds a new feature to the language that didn't exist earlier. So I can remove the print and instead of that write say, and then I can eliminate also the new line. And if I press F5 now, this already saves the file and prints it out. So you will see the result of the new version. And you see it's the same. It still works. So you don't have to type so much if you use 510 and you can use the say keyword, you don't have to add the new line. Uh, that's fine, but uh, we would like to have some interaction with the outside world. So let's say, let's ask the user what is his name? What is your name? Okay, so we are going to ask the person and then we will need to a way to get the information from the user. So I define a new variable, a variable, the first variable we have, which is called dollar name. I use the my keyword to define it to declare the variable. Dollar is always uh, the prefix of every scalar variable. Uh, so in this case, the name of the variable is dollar name. And then we use the this operator, which is uh, reading uh, from the standard input from the keyboard, uh, one line till the user presses enter. So the result will go into this dollar a variable called dollar name. And then we would like to print it out so we say hello and we add dollar name. So as you can see, you can embed uh, variables into strings and it will be printed out. Uh, let's continue this uh, example. Uh, let, let's run this example now. So I press F5. It asks me how, what's my name. So I type in, let's say, foo. Press enter and then it will tell me hello foo. That's great so far. Now let's be a bit more polite and uh, let's ask uh, How are you? And uh, let's go on with this. I press F5, it asks my name, still called Foo. Uh, and when it prints out you see that uh, after Foo it prints out a new line. And only then the comma. Uh, why is that? So when we printed, when we typed in the response foo, we had to press enter in order to tell the Windows and to tell Perl that uh, the input ended, that the name that can finish uh, adding to the name variable. And we didn't remove that new line. So here we have the new line and it's printed out, uh, even though we don't really see it in this code. And because it's such a special case, Perl has a special function for it to remove that thing. So I type in chomp, which is the function to remove a new line from the end of a string. And I provide the name of the variable. This will remove the training new line from this string. Running the script again, uh, I'm still called foo. But this time, as you can see, the new line is gone from there and it's uh, working fine. I think that's enough for the first uh, tutorial. There are some uh, exercises going to be in the blog, the, in the uh, blog that is associated with this uh, uh, screencast. Please follow the link below and uh, you will find exercises. You can play with them and uh, I hope to see you in the next chapter. Bye bye.